Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're going to talk about the ship's close-in weapon system, or the Phalanx. The Phalanx is a 20 millimeter Gatling gun that uh, the versions that this ship fired would have been shooting an, an 11 millimeter depleted uranium round encased in the larger 20 millimeter Sabot, or Sabo. It has a really, really high rate of fire because it's a six barrel Gatling gun. And uh, basically that is our last line of defense against incoming aircraft or missiles. We're sitting in the Combat Engagement Center right now, uh, one of the most immaculately restored and reactivated spaces on the ship. And yet we're in front of the only empty rack in the whole room. Because the Phalanx is still an active duty system, which equips just about every ship in the Navy, uh, the Phalanx control system from here in CEC was removed when the ship was decommissioned. And uh, it's one of the very few components that we have not been able to track down. The first week of June, Battleship New Jersey and some other museum ships were invited to the Philadelphia Navy Yard to strip spare parts off of five of the Perry class frigates there. And each Perry had a Sea Whiz on board. So one of the things that we will be looking for while on that strip trip is the equipment to fill in this Sea Whiz rack. Uh, we've been looking for 20 years, but since it's such a contemporary uh, piece of equipment, we have not been able to restore it. If you have a line on where we can get Phalanx control equipment, please reach out to us and let us know. I'm sitting at one of the ship's air search radar repeaters. So from here, we can see incoming targets. As these targets get closer, we have a series of countermeasures we can use if we think we need to. These boxes over here with the digital numbers on them are IFF transponders. So we can read uh, identification friend or foe off of the electronics being put out by an incoming missile or aircraft. If it has American radars in it, uh, we, we can assume that it is American or allied uh, equipment. If it has former Soviet bloc systems in it, then we can guess that it's probably uh, an aggressor country in most cases. Next to the phalanx is our ECM panel. That's also going to help us detect incoming electronics and it'll help us uh, scramble them so that uh, maybe we can throw off the enemy missiles guidance from that console right there. Once we have detected, identified, and attempted to scramble an incoming missile or aircraft, then we've got to go to uh, more active measures. Th these are all passive. Assuming the airborne object is still coming in towards us and is still known to be a threat, we can engage it with our chaff launchers. We have Serbok launchers, super rapid blooming off board chaff dispensers, which are basically shooting shredded aluminum into the air. And we've got the Phalanx. The Phalanx can engage missiles. It's got its own radar systems on board that track incoming objects and its outgoing bullets. So it's very short range, but very, very sophisticated. And uh, Phalanx systems have had great success engaging missiles over the years uh, in both tests and combat. Uh, in particular, the Army uses a version of this that they can use to uh, even engage incoming artillery and mortar rounds uh, in addition to missiles and rockets. Uh, the most famous Phalanx related incident uh, involving Iowa class battleships would have been uh, involving the battleship Missouri during the Persian Gulf War. New Jersey shot down some missiles in tests, but never had any enemy missiles launched at her in combat. Missouri did. An Iraqi Silkworm missile was launched at the fleet off of Felucca Island during the uh, first Gulf War, and uh, different ships took different actions. Some ships launched chaff and other ships engaged their phalanx systems. The phalanx, because missiles move so quickly, can be basically unsafe and it will automatically track and engage any hostile targets that uh, it detects or any targets that don't have friendly IFF. So if it's going faster than 140 miles per hour and it doesn't have a friendly IFF, you hit the on switch and this will track and engage it automatically. Well, the ships that launched chaff, uh, that chaff was picked up as an unidentified 
signature by another ship's phalanx and so the phalanx fired at the chaff. Of course, it's just shredded aluminum foil, so the, the depleted uranium rounds went straight through it. It's designed to go through armor plating. Aluminum foil is not going to do anything. Uh, and ended up hitting the battleship Mizora in a couple of places on her superstructure. Not enough to, to do any serious damage, but uh, that was the worst damage these ships took in the Persian Gulf. This space, just aft of the bridge on the O4 level, is the SeaWiz magazine for the forward mounts. There's one magazine associated with each of the four SeaWiz mounts that the ship has. Most smaller ships have a single mount, while larger ships have four, one at each corner. Uh, some destroyers are designed to have two, but in most cases they only have one and the forward position is empty, with the idea of being in wartime you would add a second one. Iowa-class battleships got the same thing. In wartime they had significantly more any aircraft guns than they carried in peacetime. On modern ships, it, it isn't just the phalanx. That's not the only SeaWiz system that these ships have. There's also the rolling airframe missile and Sea Sparrow missiles, which is more of a medium range than a uh, close range system. The hour class battleships did not have any of the standard missiles, which are your long range anti-air or Sea Sparrows for your short range anti-air. Uh, and so they get a full complement of four phalanx systems and would have had to rely on the other ships in their task force for any greater anti-aircraft protection. So uh, in the SeaWiz magazine here, I believe all they've done is taken a former 40 millimeter magazine that would have fed the uh, mounts on the O5 level above us. It's got a World War II era chill water radiator in the overhead, which is common in magazine spaces. Uh, and it has a magazine sprinkler system, which looks like it's from the 80s to me, but um, is here nonetheless. And you've got racks, we could store all the ammunition, and then you've got a small elevator here that could be hooked. There's a hatch in the overhead, and there's a slot in the deck above it for a JDAV at the sit, so you could manually pull basically a chain fall attached to the JDAVIT and attached to this elevator to get this up to the O5 level. And then you can take the boxes of ammo out. Uh, and basically you've got to hand feed this ammunition into the SeaWiz. A SeaWiz, uh, because it fires so quickly, can only hold about a minute's worth of ammunition. Uh, and it takes approximately 15 minutes to load all of the new ammunition into the gun. We're up on the O5 level now. And uh, we know that this door built into the forward face of the superstructure in this whole structure that was added in the 80s is related to the SeaWiz. The, the first giveaway is this new style door, which is very similar to the SeaWiz magazine doors, which uh, was clearly added in the 80s. And the second giveaway is it says SeaWiz on the tag above the door. So like the SeaWiz equipment down below, this space has been pretty much gutted. It's got an air handler unit still in there and uh, some of the shipboard communication stuff, but the actual equipment used to control the SeaWiz locally has been removed, just like the main control box down below. And if something happened and CEC was knocked out, remember it is not in an armored part of the ship, well then you've got a backup space where you can theoretically still control these units if needed. During World War II, this position was occupied by the highest 40 millimeter guns. There's one on each side of the bridge. If you built a model of the ship, you no doubt remember these. In the 1980s, they took the space, and you can still see the ring from where the 40 millimeter gun tub was, and they installed the forward SeaWiz here. The SeaWiz is not just the weapons and ammunition mount itself, it's also the brackets in the bulkhead where the uh, JDAVIT goes, and this whole structure was added to the forward face of the superstructure in the 1980s for the SeaWiz equipment. And here's the stand that the JDAVIT would go in, and the hatch that leads down to the magazine below. We've got a ready service ammunition locker right here, and this is where you could store cans of ready to go ammunition so that you could immediately take that out and start loading this prior to uh, more ammunition coming up from the hold. These are painted white 
on the outside instead of gray. And that way, uh, and it's two layers thick, as you can see here, so that the light layer is absorbing all of the heat of the sun or reflecting it, and it's not cooking off the ammunition inside. So that's how you know it's a uh, ammunition magazine. And then here, you've got the gun itself. It is a chain gun, so it is fed from ammunition loaded into a magazine that is then fed through a chain into a drum. It's a Gatling gun, so it's got the six barrels in it, and that's the lower part of the mount. It can rotate on this axis here, side to side, and uh, you can see that it, it's got a yoke that allows it to pivot up and down. It's got a pretty wide arc of fire there. Sea skimming missiles, it'll have to aim down to get them, and uh, aircraft flying high overhead, it'll have to point up at them. The white drum on top that looks a little bit like R2-D2 is where all of the electronics and guidance packages and radar are stored. And so that is what is pinging your incoming missile or aircraft and allowing the gun to track it. And like I said earlier, it not only tracks the incoming projectile, it tracks all of its outgoing projectiles as well. The radar is that sophisticated. And that way it can make sure that those two signatures line up eventually and it ensures a kill in relatively quick order. This is an extremely sophisticated system that, like I said earlier, is very effective. The only main counter for a system like this is to overwhelm it with waves of missiles. Missiles are expensive, but battleships are more expensive. So if you can throw 10 missiles at the battleship, this thing can't engage all 10 of them in its two mile range as they're coming in at Mach 3. Uh, and again, remember, it's only got one minute worth of ammunition. So after it's engaged them, it runs out. That's part of the reason why we've got four. That way you've got two covering every arc of fire for the ship, two forward, two to the side, so on and so forth. So when one runs out, hopefully the other one can pick up those missiles and engage it. The Navy put in a prefab structure on the after deck house to raise the after two uh, phalanx mounts up to the same level as the forward mounted 05 level ones. Remember for those forward mounted ones they had the uh, former 40 millimeter gun positions. Well back aft around the second funnel there were a set of former uh, 40 millimeter gun positions as well. And I always assumed that the Navy cut that away and then installed the new prefab structure. The structure I'm talking about, of course, is the triple leveled uh, 40 millimeter position that shows up in uh, the Iowa class profile from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So it seemed to me like that structure, that, that whole amidships battery, would have just been cut off and a new structure dropped in. But I have proof here that that is not the case. If you look at the deck here, you can see this radius in it. It's the same 18 foot uh, diameter circle that we see it on other 40 millimeter gun tubs. Uh, and you can see that there's a huge difference in the corrosion in the special treatment steel that this was built out of compared to the mild steel that the Navy was using in the 80s. Uh, the mild steel is less pure, less noble, and so it is sacrificing itself for the more pure metal. So here we see the remnants of the gun tub, and if we go down below into this space, uh, you can see that, yeah, they just retained the original structure and they dropped a prefab box directly on top of it, and it didn't quite fit right. It overhangs, which is why we've got this extra decking added. Uh, and so the gunnery department took over much of this structure back here. There are some workshops and uh, part of the area was turned into a gym. And uh, there, there's nothing really left there to see. But up here, you can see that uh, the extra section they added, they turned into the SeaWiz magazine, and it looks just like the forward magazine. It's got a sprinkler system and racks for ammunition and a Jade Avid hoist that'll take it up to the level above. The thing that it's got that none of the other positions have is this door. And this door opens directly out onto an elevator platform. And this elevator goes all the way down from the O1 level uh, up here to the O4 level uh, so that you can lift all these boxes of ammunition up here. 
The Sea Wiz specifically uses depleted uranium because it is significantly heavier than other types of ammunition. And so it can get a higher velocity, does more damage when it hits something. So heavier than a traditional lead bullet. Uh, which means that carrying a box of ammunition for it, and remember how fast these things go through ammunition, is a little bit too much to ask for a sailor. So you've got the elevator that'll bring it up here, and then comes into this magazine. And interestingly, the Iowas are asymmetrical. They've only got an elevator on the starboard side. So you've got to carry it down the hallway to the port side magazine. But that's a lot easier than carrying it up three or four flights of stairs. So here you can see the elevator. And as it goes down through the decks, down to the O1 level, you're mount uh, 55 on the starboard side. And you can also see how the prefab structure doesn't quite fit onto the remnants of the old curved gun tub. And it's something that's amused me ever since I started working here. Uh, and it's a travesty we haven't made this video sooner. What do you think is the best close-in weapon system in the world today? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of businesses and private viewers like yourselves. If you would like to support the museum, there's a link in the description to do that. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that other people find out about our channel and start watching us. That will also let you know when we're posting new content five times a week. Thanks for watching.